Hi friends, good day. Uh, in the last two class, we had uh, discussion basics and also the the syllabus part of uh, the partnership accounts as far as the resolution of a partnership firm is concerned. Uh, the I divide into um, four categories: dissolution of a firm. Then <clears throat> I've explained you about uh, the conversion of a firm or a sale of a firm to a company or a conversion of a firm to a company or a sale of a firm to a company or a sale of a firm to another firm then i have given you explanation of piecemeal distribution then um, the fourth point is amalgamation of partnership firm these are four areas which you we will be discussing here in the uh, this particular i mean a topic right coming back to this my dear friends when you look at the dissolution generally this is very important point the source see whenever you are uh, learning any chapter for doing the, any problems we need to have a basic source and whenever you got you need to have a clarity let me tell you any chapter any subject uh, when you don't know how to approach to that basically you should try to understand the reason for for which we are learning this and what is going to be the outcome of this particular topic and this is a small advice i wish to give to all of you whenever you are having confusion like you don't know how to open the book you don't know sometimes sometimes i am not saying with all of you maybe some of you are really good in doing it understanding it but whenever you are you are approached to any uh, subject any beginning your approach has to be why i am doing this why i am learning this and how this will lead to the desired result of this particular and what is the desired result of this particular chapter a particular topic as the case may be so you need to have clarity see like partnership accounts the basic thing the definition part i think you all agree with me accounting is the art of recording classifying summarizing analyzing interpreting recording general classifying ledger analyzing recording classifying summarizing like trial balance to final accounts analyzing interpreting communicating the result thereon on these these these, these things these things you will be learning like later on stages management accounting part anal analysis communicating the results at various stages that will be will be learning so ba basically if you want to analyze something are um, analyzing and then communicating the result you need to first know to get the result that is what primarily you, you learned that in ca foundation or group one of accounting most of the accounts what you have learned or what i taught to you people is up is about the knowing the result of a particular type of organization which you really want to uh, know as as an organization because the accountability of an accountant or I mean the accountability of a the management because the management is accountable no for that they are hiring the accountant and they are asking you to please kindly this is the data which we are providing to you you just go through this data and you i want from you as an accountant that you give me the report of report report about the financial activities in terms of result or in terms of that position so that then if you can give us if you can assist us and then and this as a chartered accountant you'll be doing the auditing of that and the accountant whatever he does and that you'll be auditing it and after that you will be sending the report to the management like i'm talking about corporate entities and maybe it can be sole proprietor it's a big organization of course they are not accountable they themselves they are accountable for themselves but they want to know about their own performance and also for tax uh, for filing of the tax returns uh, or maybe partnership when you got more number of partners i think this is what the basic the structure which works out so the some data has been given and because i am accountable the management i am accountable to somebody who has invested you know so for in that regard they will be asking you to assist as an accountant you need to give them true and fair picture about the performance of an organization this is the whole idea of learning the accounts I think we had a discussion on this at, uh, at various levels but i think now you will be in a better position since you have done already you have learned already about all these activities all, all these how you need to prepare accounting general debit credit etc now i think so you are so good in that doing that i know that you all uh, can quickly grasp it 
Now, what I wish to share with you is that similarly, like in group two accounting, what is that you will be learning, sir? What is that you want to do it, sir? My dear friends, the topics, if you if you look into it, the, the sequence of the topics which I really wish to take out is that, like uh, we talk about uh, partnership accounts, basically it's about dissolution, dissolving the firm. Corporate accounting, I mean, sorry, amalgamation of companies. That is also basically, see the difference is here you're going for dissolution of partnership firm and in future you don't want to continue. That is what I called as dissolution of partnership firm. Uh, we, are, we have divided into it, it and peaceful distribution also same thing I don't want to continue I we just we want to share but the only thing is the dissolution of firm and piecemeal distribution both are same in dissolution of firm what you generally you will be doing is that lump sum amount we write the entries as if lump sum amount is being realized lump sum amount is being paid that is what if that same content if you are making the payment in a piecemeal manner as and when you realize just you want to distribute that amount so that is also part of dissolution actually but as for topic sake topic sake we, we just it has been given like a understanding sake chapter has been split into that particular part then when it comes to conversion of a firm or a conversion of a firm into country company when it becomes illegal association sometimes due to illegal association also um, more than the statutory limit the strength is the, the number of members is more than that particular limit 50 or whatever the case may be and then you need to you learn in partnership back then that is firm is to be dissolved and then you need to go for a floating of a company or the partners have decided let us go for expansion of business and stuff taking risk having the keeping the risk on um, on few, only few partners let us go for uh, expansion of the business so that we can get more money that we can also share the risk of uh, this particular uh, business i think uh, we, we we normally discuss risk and return trade off like we need to have a balancing act you just you can't say simply i alone can do that i alone uh, yeah i'm 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 confident i got uh, or few people are having confidence that we got enough money but the thing is that you don't know whether business whether you are going to get success or failure you don't know so don't want to take a chance business is all about risk you know risk element will be there that is why sometimes like i don't want to take chance or maybe this is the one reason i don't want to take, ch take chance or there's a good demand for my product but i we don't have sufficient fund then we may be converting this firm into a private limited company or maybe converting that into public limited this public limited company straight away now that is what you learned uh, the acquisition of a business you learned that in uh, group one uh, profit or loss prior to incorporation, pre-incorporation, post-incorporation. I think that particular stuff you learn. I think that's I'm trying to uh, link these things to you. So try to understand what you learned there is, my dear friends. The firm has been. I'm I'm trying to reconnect uh, the uh, to. I'm trying to link what you learned in uh, profit or loss prior to incorporation my my intention is I, I i generally you know that most of you know about my way of teaching i just i don't want to rush unless you got the solid base on why we are learning this topic and what is the outcome of this particular chapter if i give if i'm able to give you clarity of thought i think then you can easily pick up you can easily do it so what i uh, i'm trying to uh, share with you is that like in uh, uh, group one uh, a firm has been acquired by a company so the management they have taken the management of the firm and they have continued for a six months or a four months and uh, this is what is called as profit to prior to incorporation and once the company has been incorporated and the result belongs to company like company it, because after incorporation it is officially called as a company even the management has taken so now you have we have you have never written the entries on the date of try to understand you learn, never learned the entries in the books of the the acquirer means the person who is taking out the company which is taking out the partnership firm or a be a sole proprietor firm but here we are talking about partnership firm that is why i'm not talking about sole proprietary concern a partnership firm has been taken away by the um, company so the management has been changed hands or or the same management but they have decided to convert the firm into a company please try to understand two things it has been purchased by the uh, group of promoters existing partnership firm has been purchased by the group of promoters they want to they, they, they have decided to take that particular stuff starting again their uh, own it will take some time and stuff the running business has been acquired 
or the running business has been converted to company in both the cases what is happening if from accounting point of view the firm has been dissolved i am talking about partnership concern please try to understand we need we need not talk about sole proprietor of course this, it is also same but since it is i am linking this to this particular chapter partnership accounts so then what happened the transferer and transferee or the person who is getting that the firm into the company's name but the management has uh, taken place so on the date of transfer try to understand on the date of transfer the person who is transferring this particular organization the partnership firm has dissolved that means they have decided okay so enough is enough we are we are closing this books we are we want to close this accounts we want to um, give hand over the keys to the purchaser the person who is acquiring this you take the keys this is what but before that they need to settle the things so then the purchasing company or the company that has been floated will be taking care of the assets and liabilities etc that particular part is being called as purchase consideration that is what we have learned purchase consideration the consideration that is to be paid so now then what you have learned in that particular chapter previously 5 years back Six years back, we used to have a chapter called as six years back. I think acquisition of a firm. Please try to understand acquisition of a firm by a company, and we used to write the entries. Suppose on first January, first January two thousand twenty, a company has been a firm has been acquired by X Y Z Limited. acquired by xyz xyz limited and it has come into incorporation the company has came into incorporation on 142020 now actually xyz firm on 112020 has been acquired by xyz limited but officially to become company it the date that has been it uh, the date on which the, it has been incorporated legally mm, um legally the company came into existence is on 1st april 2020 so the due during these three months some activities has taken place so we have learned this 112020 to 142020 we have learned in that group one as a pre incorporation profit or loss prior to incorporation suppose they are closing books on 31st march 2021 this particular period can be called as post incorporation this is what you learned but now the emphasis is on this is that on 1st january 2020 accounting treatment in the books of dissolved firm that is xyz and on the same day xyz limited also will be writing accounting treatment accounting treatment in the books of purchasing company or company that has been floated that is on 1st january 2020 please try to understand so what you learned in your um group 1 1120 to 1st april 2000 1st april 2020 1st january 1st january 2020 to 1st april 2020 three months is pre incorporation result and 31st march 2021 post incorporation result this you learned your you have you opened accounts in the books of xyz limited now the topic which You, we will be you will be learning is that i will be teaching you is that accounting treatment in the books of dissolved firm that is xyz on 1st jan 2020 accounting treatment in the books of purchasing company on 1st jan 2020 actually this was there in syllabus of group 1 6 years ago we used to learn entries this is what is called as acquisition of a business by a company Please try to understand. Acquisition of a business means acquisition of a non-corporate entity. Is pay attention to this. Acquisition of a non-corporate entity is by a company. 
So you used to learn entries on 1st January 2020 in group 1. It was earlier in group 1. So that is in the books of purchasing company. Now the same thing accounting treatment in the books of dissolved firm that is XYZ partnership firm on 1st January 2020 was to be a syllabus in group 2. So you should learn entries and this particular was a one topic, topic it was there in group 1, group 1 previously and profit or loss prior to incorporation this entire topic was also there in group 1. So how many topics you used to have? Group 1, two topics. One is entries in the books of company for acquiring the non corporate business means it can be sole proprietor or partnership. Then second part is in the books of company you used to learn only profit or loss prior to incorporation, profit or loss pre and post incorporation that you used to learn. Now this has been taken away in the new syllabus. That means you are not learning the accounting treatment in the books of purchasing company. Please try to understand. Now you are learning only this one in group 2 now. Accounting treatment in the books of dissolution firm. But you also should know the accounting treatment in the books of purchasing company also know. That has been done away. But having said that, we are having, whether they have updated that I don't know. But from last 3 years in the new syllabus also, one or two problems you are having. Accounting treatment in the books of purchasing company also you should learn. It's a very 3 or 4 entries. Sir, why you are explaining these things now? I don't want to confuse you. I think you got the clarity. How many chapters you are having? Tell me. Totally from this particular thing. Three chapters. In the books of transferring firm. This is partnership firm. In the books of a company. And just for example, I'm giving 1120. 1120. Books of a purchasing or taking over company, acquiring company, first gen 2000. Okay. Then what you learned profit or loss prior to incorporation, pre and post incorporation. So how many chapters this, this three, if you look into it in whole syllabus three, so this you have learned already. I think you got the clarity. This I think this also same thing concept I've explained. If you recollect yourself, I think most of you are having that records with you. If you remember, you can go back and you can see. 1st January 2020 to 1st April, 1st April to 31st March 2021 in the books of company used to prepare. This you are done. Now this you are not learned. It means it actually it is not there. This is what is called as acquisition of a business. Less profit or loss prior to incorporation. From that acquisition has been taken away. It has been done away. But having said, the same thing we are having somewhere, one or two problems we are having, that I will be discussing even this one also. Now the first phase, the intention is to teach you about in the books of transferring company, that means the firm is going to be dissolved. That means dissolution of a firm and you don't want to continue the company or dissolution of the firm, but you want to float a company. But what is to be done? Tell me, firm has to be dissolved. Either you don't want to, you don't wish to company existing partner, don't wish to continue, continue business. That is why they went for dissolution. And after that, after getting the money, whatever they want, they will, they will start there on their own. And the partnership firms comes to an end. But partnership firm comes to an end. But all the partners or some of the partners, they have decided, let us become the promoters of a company. Let us dissolve the partnership, partnership firm and let us float a company. That is what conversion of a firm into company. So there also, you will be learning only entries for dissolution, except entries for purchase consideration. That's it. 
that means whatever the entries you will be learning in dissolution of firm holds good even for conversion of a firm into a company or sale of a firm to a company or sale of a firm to another firm you will be learning entries only in the books of tell me what is that entries you will be learning my dear friends you will be learning entries in the books of partnership firm so this is what in the books of partnership firm on the date of dissolution in the books of partnership firm on the date of dissolution but at the same time on the date of dissolution if you are selling the firm to a company in one or two problems you are also learning the entries in the books of a company got it now sir it is about dissolution no sir so what is the object of this chapter now tell me you are good dissolving the firm you want to clear off all your outside liabilities and you have to settle the things to the partners this is what and when we come to company what are the things we when you are selling the firm to a company or converting the firm into company few more one or two, two more points we need to add instead of uh, <clears throat> selling the uh, the assets the assets may be transferred to a new company that's it either you can uh, sell the assets or you can transfer the assets and that we'll be discussing and i don't want to just uh, confuse you now in the beginning just just uh, for information i'm giving okay now okay object you got the clarity dissolution means winding up why should we so who is bothered about uh, accounting sir all accounts has to be closed sir here the result are etc is not so material of course we are having few tips twist of what are the those twists i'll just i'll give you an example 31st December, I decide to go for dissolution. But having said that, it won't take, it won't materialize immediately. But then what happened? The business might have been extended for three or four months or six months to completely close the entire business process. Then during that time, three or six months accounting, you need to prepare. Then you may need to have final accounts again for that particular extended period, the date on which you decide to go for dissolution, but it process has taken three or four months or a five months or a six months period. So for that particular period, sometimes you may need to prepare a final accounts for that particular period. Got it? But generally that information has to be given, how we need to identify, how we need to learn about those things. I'll be explaining when the problem comes or definitely I'll highlight that point. I'll explain you on that particular, um, when, we, when we take up that particular problem. Now, sir, then what about amalgamation, sir? What is the difference between dissolution of a firm and amalgamation? See, dissolution of firm, firm has been dissolved and it has been, uh, now, in, as I told you, taken by a company. Okay, that's fine. Or dissolution of firm, no taken over by the company. But I'm trying to compare the bit, the difference between dissolution of a firm and, and that firm has been dissolved and it has been taken by a company or floated by a company. Now, in case of amalgamation of companies, two companies, two or more companies goes for liquidation and it's a merger and join in together. You're seeing the era of mergers nowadays. Like uh, we are saying banks went for merger of so many six to seven banks. National bank of merged has been like Andhra Bank, few banks has been Union Bank, you're calling them as Punjab National Bank. Few banks have been merged and you'll be having one single bank. Like this is what? And that those particular banks has to be liquidated and you will be calling by the new name. That's it. Amalgamation of a companies. And this company is taking care of taking over of XYZ Limited or like that. Amalgamation <coughs> is a merger. And then we will be having different terms. Absorption, reconstruction, etc. Now there also existing companies are going for uh, they are closing the books. They are closing the accounts and they will be merged with the new company. Now that also about like a closing of accounts. So now the difference is that here firm has been dissolved, a company has been floated. And here one company, existing company, one or two or more companies went for dissolution, like I mean winding up, uh, closing, closing the books and that has been merged with a new company. So that is why here in this all case also amalgamation also you are not looking at the result only you are looking at the at the time of merger how to merge the these two books 
after to, uh, the accounts of these two companies how to match the accounts of these two companies you will be learning that is the learning object that is why what they have done when you are going for merger like it's like a uh, x y and um, uh, p q or r s two different companies p q company r s company and both of them are merged called as p q r s in the books of p q r s what are the entries you should learn in the books of p q what is that entry you need to write for closing of accounts what are the entry for r s p q r s p q p q r s and these two have been merged and it has been called as PQRS, a new company. The same thing will be having amalgamation of firm, PQ from RS firm and merged as PQRS firm. That you will be having amalgamation of firms. Here PQ company, RS company went for uh, um, closing of their accounts, closing of their business and that has been taken over by PQRS. is called as amalgamation of companies, merger of companies. So, in the books of PQ, accounts has to be closed. In the books of RS, accounts have to be closed. But the same concept is in partnership PQ firm, RS firm has been, has been dissolved. A new firm has been called, has been created, is called as PQ RS firm. That's the difference. Here, amalgamation is about companies. Partnership about, is about partners. Only thing is that in the books of company, you will be you straight the entries. And the same year also in the books of new company, you should write the entries. So that is why the entries which you learn, suppose by default, if you got any entries in the books of a company, the company which has been taken or taken, the company has taken over the partnership, existing partnership firm, the entries which you write in the books of company will be same as the case where you will be writing entries in the books of the company which is taking over the existing two companies called as pq and co rs and co so that means the entries will be same that is why generally they won't be asking you the entries to, you should write entries in the books of a company when firms go goes for amalgam uh, when firms go for um, sale of the firm partnership firm into company the reason is that the same entries will be learning again where in the amalgamation of companies so this is also winding up. Then you are having exclusive topic called liquidation. I don't want to match. I don't want to uh, sell my firm. But the, I, I don't sell my company. I'm talking about liquidation is about companies, not about firm. Liquidation of companies. And it has been governed by Companies Act 2013. And the rules and regulation, how a company can be liquidated. What are the reasons why the company is liquidated? Now, in these three cases, it's like a closing of accounts, basically. These three chapters is not about the result. These three chapters, maybe result means depending on when, if you go for expansion of the business. This is what the, the, the learning object has to be. Got it? I think you may be having some idea. I hope I'm not confusing you. I'm trying to give you the boundaries of this particular chapter. So the, what are the similarities which you are having? The first three chapters which I decide to handle is about the closing of the books and then uh, if excuse me, in the problem they will be giving you <clears throat> like um, in the books of new company you should write the entry then you should write the entries otherwise you need not worry about it. Okay. Now, the source I need, you, you know, the source which I need in the books of partnership, uh, the accounting written books of partnership firm on the date of dissolution. So, what are the things which I need actually? What are the things which I need for um, going for um, dissolution? What are the accounting treatment to do account, to go for accounting, closing of account? I need to have a source. Generally, on the date of Dissolution. The source is financial position. This is what is called as balance sheet. Financial position. That is balance sheet. So balance sheet as on the date of dissolution. Balance sheet as on the date of dissolution. Got it? Balance sheet as on the 
the date of dissolution. Generally, what is the balance sheet you will be having? Some assets like land and building, plant and machinery, furniture, motor vehicles. Motor vehicles, inventory, cash, trade receivable, trade receivable including bills receivable, letters and bills receivable, and cash and bank, whatever it may be. Liabilities, X capital, Y capital, Z capital. I'm assuming they are following fluctuating capital. X capital, Y capital, Z capital, Kratos. Or we can say trade payable. Then general reserve, etc. This is the information. Now, what I generally will be doing is that I these are the assets which I am having. Now the concept is about dissolution. You know, dissolution. You want to close. How you close? I told you in the last class. The assets has to be realized. Land and buildings has to be sold. Plant and machinery has to be sold. Furniture has to be sold. Motor vehicles has to be sold. Inventory has to be sold. Trade receivable has to be sold. Cash won't be sold. You know that cash can't cash cannot be sold. Huh? Cash cannot be sold. And with this, trade payable is to be paid. Only one example: the trade payable can be credit or a bills payable. And this general reserve is undistributed profits. No, this belongs to whom? The partners. X, Y, Z. This general reserve belongs to whom? Partners. This reserve may be in the form of investment or something like that. Source like um, discussion sake like I'm telling you. The general reserve will be belongs to partners capital. So which will not be touched now? <coughs> general reserve. Finally, the accounts which will be left out is cash account is one account which will be left out. And then partners capital, these two accounts will continue till disbursement of cash to partners capital. Now the thing is that the land and building, plant and machinery, furniture, motor vehicles, inventory, trade receivable, these all have to realize, you know. So land and building, say for example, the value of land and building is 1 lakh. When you are going for realization, we I am not talking about part the taken by the partner set, it is too early, we discussed later on. This land and building 1 lakh rupees which is here uh, and book value we talk about these all are book values no please you need to pay a lot of attention the terms which I am using these all are book values book values book values book values book values book value the liability is also book value all liabilities are book value so this except a reserve also book value but reserve will belongs to partners partners capital that their savings or sometimes you may also have, so I have some uh, undistributed loss like PNL account debit balance. I am not starting with that particular uh, PNL account debit balance. We can discuss the later on. The concept is same. So these building, land and building, plant and machinery, generally I am not talking about taken by partner for the time being. They have decided to sell. When you want to sell, what happened? You may get a profit or loss. Say for example, land and building 1 lakh. You will be getting around... Uh, 120,000. I think it's clear 120,000 profit you got. So, only two examples I won't take. I can't, I don't have the time to take all assets, but I've given just one or two examples. I want to give you book value, say 50,000, has been sold for, say, 40,000. Land and building book value 1 lakh has been sold for 1 lakh 20. Plant and machinery book value 50,000 has been sold for 40,000 rupees. Got it? 40,000 rupees. Now, you know that on one asset you got profit, on another asset you got a loss. Okay. Furniture also may get a profit or loss. Motor vehicles you may get a profit or loss. Inventory you may get a profit or loss. Trade receivable you may get a profit or loss. Trade payable also you may be paying the actual amount, say, say 20, say uh, 30,000. Is 30,000 you will be paying, of course. If you are paying more than the liability, profit or loss. Only I am talking about for the time being the concept of profit or loss. So, generally, what you do when you are having all these assets, these all assets will appear in the ledger accounts, no existing ledger account, like land and building, for example, is uh, 
two balance brought down it is appearing as land and building has been appearing as uh, one lakh rupees and so is the case of plant and machinery two balance brought down 50000 okay now generally when you sell you what is the entry you will be writing because existing asset was appearing balance sheet as i said mean ledger account is being already opened is being continued that some balances balance sheet is nothing but balances of residual accounts what are those residual accounts are personal account real account that is what is called as balance sheet a balance sheet is a sheet containing the ledger balances of assets and liabilities so assets account show will show will show debit balance now i told you when you sell it you will be writing bank account at r to asset by bank 20000 lakh 20000 and plant and machinery by bank i have given example 40000 sold for 40000 now you can see the difference here one asset you are getting profit on one asset other asset you are getting a loss on one asset you are getting profit on one on another asset you are getting a loss so profit you transfer to PL account normally normally to PL account uh, not PL here loss loss will be transferred to PL account now is there any meaning in opening PL account tell me and am I closing my books why should I transfer to PL account PL account via PL account it goes to where partners capital account from PL account it goes to partners capital account instead of that PL account we can directly transfer to partners capital account now in, in place of PL account we can transfer this to capital because I don't want to open PL account why PL account is not required because I am closing my books why if I if I am having any intention of continuing the business then I can say profit on sale of asset can be transferred so then again here also what is that you will be doing by capital account that means on one asset you are having profit on the other asset you are having a loss on one asset you are having a profit on another asset you are getting a loss so like that one asset profit one asset loss one asset profit one asset loss at the time of realization the profit or loss on these assets realization of assets will be transferred to partners capital account but how difficult it is no that is why what they have done they have opened an account called as <coughs> instead of this now they have opened an account called as a realization account the first account today which i am talking to you is about which account the realization account let me give explanation to this then we can talk about why it is being called as a realization account so what they do just i am giving two examples empty all these assets except cash all these liabilities except reserve and partners capital will be transferred to an account called as realization in realization what you write is that to land and building to plant and machinery you can see land and building now here what is that what is that i have written realization account data to land and building book value you should write one lakh relation to plant and machinery fifty thousand now what happened the equation changes here the entry is relation to land and building in land and building what is that i write by relation simply i'll be writing book value i'm not writing this profit or transfer whatever it, i'm leaving it so land and building account has been closed to land and building asset account has been transferred to each account relation account i'm only given giving two examples so is the case of plant and measure instead of writing loss etc what i do is that book value i'm transferring to realization account plant and machinery account has been transferred to which account realization account 50000 now what happened now land and building account has been closed plant and machinery where it has been closed how it has been closed by transfer to which account realization 
Now, when you sell the asset, since the asset account has been closed, because all assets have been clubbed to a particular account called as realization account. Realization account. Why it has been clubbed to realization account? So that we can easily find out the profit or loss on realization of sale of assets and payment of liability. The liabilities part I'll add on add later on. Just I'm trying to give you why this account is being opened, the advantage. Then what I do, I write when these two assets have been sold, I write buy bank. Here I write land and building has been sold for 120 and uh, furniture has been, plant and machinery has been sold for 40. That's fine. 120 plus 40, how much? 160. You write 160. And then 160 minus 150, 10,000. 10,000 is net result and this is transferred to partner's capital account. Okay, now you, even if you take example here, previous to land and building you got profit of 20, plant and machine you got loss of 10, 20 minus 10 net effect is 10,000 No, This 10,000 transfer to where partner's capital account, is it not easy? The how they have designed you know accounting, instead of opening all the ledger accounts again by closing those accounts, instead of doing that all the ledger accounts with the asset account uh, have been transferred book value to which account, relation account. So. Simple words, why do you prepare realization account? Realization account is prepared in order to realize the assets of the firm and the amount so realized is utilized for payment of liabilities of the firm according to the provisions of the act. And similarly, this account is prepared in coming days we will be learning any expenses incurred by the firm in realizing assets of the firm, in future we will be calling as realization of uh, realization expenses. It means to sell the assets, you need to appoint a broker or agent to get more amount. For that, sometimes we will be incurring some expenses or it is called relation expenses. Or old asset, when you sell, you want to make some repairs so that asset looks new and you can get some money, more amount for that. This, this all comes under the category of relation expenses. Now, and that also will be transferred to relation account. The difference between the two sets of account, difference means the credit side and debit side. If credit side is more, is called as a profit. If debit side is more, it is called as a loss. So the relation account, why do you prepare? What is the reason for uh, preparing the relation account is that the main purpose is to realize the assets of the firm and utilize the amount that is needed for payment of liabilities of the firm. And, and by doing so, by realizing these assets and liabilities, you may be getting some result. It is called a net result. That net result can be profit or loss is transferred to. The net result of realization of assets and liabilities will be transferred to an account called as partner's capital account. I think you got the clarity. So how many accounts, uh, what is the first account we need to do? When after getting the balance sheet, realization. Why we are transferring all the assets? Because it's a clumsy exercise, like you cumbersome exercise rather. It will, you will be transferring all assets to uh, concerned asset account and concerned asset account open, concerned asset account. 10 assets are there, 10 assets account you have to open. 10 times when you realize, 10 times I have to make an entry in the asset account. From there it has to be again taken to bank account. And I think it's like from doing the problem, practically speaking, they do the same thing because all the already the all assets on liabilities and etc. will be in the books of ledger of the particular, particular partnership firm. Only realized amount will be done. But since on the date of dissolution, our intention is to quickly ascertain the result on, on this particular activities whether we are getting profit on relation or loss on relation that can be easily known through which account realization account then that net result will be transferred to partners capital account this is first account and the second account i told you cash account this cash account now i am making is second one and these all these things will be transferred to which account realization now this become first account Trade payable also will be transferred to relation account. All assets and liabilities, I have only taken example of two, two examples I have taken. This one and all these assets also will be transferred, including liabilities. And finally, which is left out? Partners capital is being left out. <coughs> Excuse me. Partners capital is being left out. And then uh, the cash account is being left out. 
realization account is closed by transfer and result to partners capital then finally partners capital and cash account is being left out cash account what are the cash you get by selling the assets and that cash amount is being used for pay making the payment to partner then finally cash account is also being closed partners capital account is also being closed so finally you can say in dissolution of firm only you will be opening three accounts come on realization account cash account and partners capital account or you say relation account partners capital account cash account and for that opening of account sometimes ledger accounts is easy but sometimes they'll be asking you very rare straight case they ask you entries so for that purpose i'll be dictating the entries to you i'll be sharing the entries with you then we can start doing the problems okay got got the clarity on this now this the entries part or the accounting which you learn is applicable for dissolution of a partnership firm generally piecemeal distribution they won't be asking the accounts having said that possibility but generally the piecemeal distribution they will be asking you to prepare a statement how you disperse the amount to the outsiders and partners i think generally that statement but the same entries concept is applicable for that also even when you are converting the firm into a company or dissolving the, uh, going for dissolution of the firm and selling to company also the entries will be same so there only one or two extra entries which you uh, need to pass you will be learning there so but i think this is a very important thing and that particular entries part you should learn so with these three classes i think i have given the basic foundation or the basic uh, information which you need for doing this particular topic really you enjoy in doing it and it's it's a, easy only thing is the topic is lengthy because of that sometimes you may feel that i am having some confusion having said you can do it with utmost con uh, confidence you should do concentration is the key you need to listen to it properly and you should practice it properly these three classes i think you need not even copy down from tomorrow onwards have a notes with you take a pen if needed instead of writing the entries on the screen i can dictate and you can take a notebook and you can have to copy down i think most of you i heard that you have maintained the notebook the same thing i wish you to maintain the notebook for group 2 also in accounting okay my dear friends so i think the basic thing entries the reason why we open relation account etc has been open has been explained and detailed manner when you learn entries we learn few more things what is book value etc those things and sometimes you may also have rectification rectification of the to be done in this dissolution before you go for dissolution if there are any errors that has taken tape has been taken place you need to go for correction of those things i think these all these things you'll be learning at later on stage my dear friends it's not uh, it is too early to discuss about these things and when a situation comes but one thing for sure this is a very big chapter that is why we have given a number of problems 30 to 40 problems i think we have been provided in the material but having said we can't do everything it will take 50 60 hours i we don't have that time you don't have that time but the basic things with which that we you should be able to work out any problem i think that is my um, motive that is my objective that i wish to share with you in the coming days okay so tomorrow onwards we'll be going for starting the problems part of it okay the sorry accounting treatment part of it then we start slowly a problem we divide that and we categorize into when all partners are solvent when one partner is insolvent when the entire firm has been so insolvent those things we will be discussing in the case of dissolution of firm then conversion and then amalgamation and piecemeal distribution etc one by one we can go i hope you got the clarity of thought on these things right uh, we will meet in the next class till then goodbye god bless you all thank you